end of your first full season. Yeah. How's it been for you? Grand, yeah, good, really good. It was, it was, it was a challenge. Obviously, uh, you've got, you know, you've got three teams playing on the one pitch. You've got men's first team, ladies, and then you've got the Broncos. Then started in January, and um, so yeah, it was a challenge. It was, it was. Listen, I, I really enjoyed it. It was. It was very rewarding, but it was it was a challenge. Yeah, it was good though, really good. When I was talking to you about it the other week, you told yeah. me how many times the pitch has been used. Was yeah, it 100 and... I, we had 125 usages on it. Yeah, that's Great. everything. That's training sessions, um, training sessions, men's games, ladies' games, uh, rugby games, uh, corporate events, use like just stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, 125 and came up to probably more when you factor in all the games that the corporate people had and stuff like that. Yeah. And how's that been for you? Because obviously like your first full season as a, as a football league ground. Yeah, uh, it was it was good. It, listen, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. it. As I said, like it's it's not as if you've got the one the one team playing on the, on the pitch all the time like last year. Um, so last year we timed to get on the pitch like days after the game, get it to recover and um, let the grass stand up again. Um, but obviously this year, obviously there was a lot of fixtures they got postponed because of COVID. So after that, then you got you'd such a heavy, heavy fixture list in January, February, um, towards the back end of December as well. So games that should have been played around Christmas time all got crammed. And then you had the rugby starting in straight away. So you might have three, four, maybe five games a week on one pitch. Um, it's heavily shaded in them months. Like, so you get from September all the way up to the middle of February, like three quarters of the pitch is in shade. So it's trying to bounce that grass back is, is a struggle. It's it's but that, listen, that's why that's why the groundsman's here is, is to, to make it presentable and make it playable as best they can, you know? Certainly. And I know you're a very um what's the right words, well researched guy, you do your research on how to maintain the turf and that, but yeah. of course it's not just you, you've got a lot of volunteers. No, exactly. Out. Like listen, I couldn't I couldn't have done this job last year um, when I was on my own. Um, obviously the club when the club hired me, um, I was introduced to the volunteers here. So I'd had Dennis Lowndes, I had Dave McKnight, I had Alex Elmers, Andy Mander, um, and Jason, and and Michael Padamantin then obviously as well. I couldn't have done my job without these lads. Like They are the ones who help me make sure that this pitch is, is if, if there's frost coming, we need to get frost covers on the pitch. I'll ring up them lads, and they'll do everything they can to try and come and help me. Yeah. Um, like Without them, like they helped me bring in the practice goals, put the goals up. Obviously, the cutting is left to myself, and the marking up is left to myself. But and the general maintenance during the week is is I, it's up to the groundsman, me, and then the assistant. But like without them lads, like they do so much for the club. It's brilliant. Um, it's brilliant. Like I I couldn't have done it without them because they helped me out massively, especially at the training ground as well. They were down there last year painting containers, fixing goals. Like I was up here in the stadium getting the growing done on the pitch and I go down there the odd day to keep an eye on it. Um, but they're fantastic, like I, I couldn't have done it without the volunteers. They're great people, great people. Sums up the club, doesn't it? Yeah, I know, 100%. 100%. Behind every great brilliant. leader is a great team. Isn't it? <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. And then um, yeah. just explain to the, to the supporters who, who might not see what's going on behind yeah. the scenes at the moment. Obviously the pitch at the moment, it was yeah. torn up the other week. So yeah. what's, what's happening now? So basically, last week it was corrowed off. So. The coral basically acts, it basically scrapes, like basically takes off about 10, 20 mil of the surface, top of the surface. Um, basically over the year, you get a lot of broken up grass up on the pitch, that turns into organic matter sitting on the pitch on the sand. Um, the only way to get rid of that 100% is to coral it off. But the pitch is like a player, the grass is, it's a living thing. Mm. It's like, it needs nutrients to survive. So obviously the more nutrients you're putting it on to try and push it on, that then has an impact then towards the end of the season or, or when it gets damp, when you don't have the heat and light to basically use up the use up the fertilizer on the pitch. So that kind of sits on the top of the surface, um, and you get a, what a thing called black layer sitting on the top, especially in the shaded areas in the winter. Yeah. Um, that's basically where you don't get enough heat and the temperatures aren't there for the for the plant to take up the nutrients. So it just sits on the top of the surface. Obviously, it's damp and shaded, like you're seeing it now in full sun. Yeah. But once you come to September, no, like it's not yeah. like this. So it basically just sits on top of the surface. So you've got to do that every year to eliminate that so it doesn't happen. Sure. Um, if you don't do it, then you come into the next season and it puts the pitch back. And the grass is the grass is, is like a player. Like if you if you play a player four or five times a week in a match, he's going to get injured. You don't give him any recovery time. The pitch yeah. is the exact same. Like it's a living it's a living thing. Like it needs nutrients. It needs rest. It needs sun. It needs heat. 
to recover itself. So the more games you have on a pitch and stuff like that, the bigger impact it's going to have on, on, on the pitch. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, the, the club have been brilliant. We've, we've, they've listened to me and, and we've gotten two grow lights at the pitch now, which is fantastic. Um, but that's, that'll make a massive difference the next season um, to being able to maintain in them areas that are heavy used, like the goal mouths and through the centre of the pitch. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. I remember. I remember the games. You'd be out there. The tractor would come out almost straight away yeah. to keep it yeah. the right length. And yeah. Well. Like yeah. Well. That. That's more so. So after the football games, we'd have rugby the next day. So myself and the volunteers and the lads who helped me out doing the rugby, we'd come out straight away because you've got yeah. a game the next day. Mm. So you've got what 12, 13 hours to get Time the pitch the transformed from football to rugby. Like. Yeah. Um. So it, it was crucial to get the goals up as quick as we could, just in case, like. There was any teething problems, um, thank God there was. But um, yeah, just basically, just to give us a free run. If anything did go wrong, we could fix it and get it ready for rugby. You know. And then, and then, Quinny, just to finish off. Obviously, yeah. I know you're sadly leaving. Yeah, leaving I'm us. very you're sad. Off to the glitz and glam of the, the Premier League with Fulham. Yeah. I bet you're really excited for that. Oh no, I am. I'm, I'm. I can't wait. Like it'll be brilliant. It'll be really good. I'm. I'm excited. But I'll, I'll miss it here. Like I miss the people. I've. I've loved working here. Like I really have loved. I. Like, I love coming into work every day here. Um, I, I give it everything I can every day to make sure it's as good as it possibly can be um, with the stuff, the resources and stuff that we have and, and, and just trying to keep it as good as I possibly could. And I'll, I'll miss it here though, I really will. Um, yeah. I've loved working here. Like I really have loved, loved the people, the fans and, and everyone that's helped me since I've been here. Um, yeah. Even people from other clubs, like other big clubs around the area have been so good to me. And, and the lads up in Wimbledon Tennis, like if, if I need stuff, they gladly give it to me. Um, I borrowed a cedar off them last year, and the local contractors who do our training ground—they've been fantastic as well. Like so, like without them, like it's it's they've helped me so much to be able to do this job, and, and along to volunteers and stuff like that. It's just you couldn't fault it. I've loved working here. I've loved it.